morning everybody I'm gonna do a little morning video this is one of the spots that I I ran into all the guys yesterday I was walking across the street and tell you a little story about that used to be a bowling alley right over there I'll tell you a little about that got a lot of history here for many years I was walking yesterday early and I thought oh I don't know if I'm gonna run into those guys and I'm walking across the Hudson County Park. I'm going to talk about this park and uh, people see me showing cameras and I don't care making videos and uh, I was walking right over there and Nick I didn't see Nick yet you know since last year John my friend and the Nick's got no legs so he rides that scooter but he gets around very active I'm going to get him to uh play another song on the guitar. This is where you catch all the buses to New York City. At night, if you're walking right up here, you could see the Empire State Building. And I grew up a couple blocks down. I just walked up here. <coughs> this park, this park is called, we, we call it Hudson County Park, but it's named after the local hero, uh, James J. Braddock. So it's really James J. Braddock Park. Braddock, I'm a big fight fan. I used to watch all the fights. And Braddock was a boxer uh, in the 1930s from North Bergen. And he was a prospect. He was a good fighter. But Braddock uh, lost a heavyweight bout. He had a, a shot at the title. And he had hand problems. He broke his hands his right hand he would break and fight you know with his hands broken and stuff and eventually he be he it was during the time of the depression great depression and eventually Braddock went into poverty had a lot of struggles and had to get on assistance aid and actually it was a Catholic charity also that he received help from I don't remember if the movie showed that or not the famous movie that came out about Braddock was The Cinderella Man. So, he worked as a longshoreman, suffered, had a hard time feeding his family. You can watch the movie if you want, Cinderella Man. And then he had another chance. He was like, at that, time, at that stage, sometimes in fighting, in the fight game, if you are a champion and you don't want to really risk your title, you pick journeyman fighters these are just guys and, so, and most of them know you're getting a fight with the champ or you're getting a fight with the top contender and nobody knows you're going to win even you don't know you're going to win but you know it's worth it because you're getting a chance and in the history of fighting when a boxer gets a chance like that this has happened multiple times sometimes the underdog takes the fight serious even though the media, the reporters, even though everybody else, the boxing announcers will say, he's just, you know, just to fill in until the real big challenge comes down the road. Well, that's the type of fighter Braddock became. And he came back, had a couple of fights. He wanted to get a chance to get back into the fight game. And he won. I think it was John Corn Griffin was one of the first, like, top heavyweights that he, he had a chance to fight, and they didn't know if they should let him fight him. Sure enough, this is where I normally run into Billy. This is where Nick I seen yesterday, Danny, right there. And I'm at that park, on James J. Braddock Park. So he beat uh, John Griffin, which was a surprise. Then he had a couple of more fights. Finally, he got a chance to fight the heavyweight champion of the world, who was Max Bear. If, um, if you ever remember the uh, sitcom, the TV show, uh, Beverly Hillbillies, the guy who played Jethro, he was Max Bear Jr., his son. I believe that that's right. I didn't look that up, but I remember that. So Max Bear Sr., his father, was a great champion. And he, he gave a chance for James Braddock to fight him for the title. 
and nobody thought that he would win. I might walk through the park a little bit. I'm right at the edge here on uh, Bergen Line Avenue. So he gets a chance to fight, and he takes the fight serious. He says, I've been through a lot. I've been through hell. By the way, Braddock was born in Hell's Kitchen area, right where I was in the Times Square area. I believe it's around 48th Street where Braddock was from, born, lived here in North Bergen. So he got a chance. I'll take this nice walk here. And sure enough, we used to play football in this field years ago, tackle football in the snow. I love doing that. And he beats Max Bear. It was an upset. And he got the title. Eventually, um, the real top fighter was Joe Lewis at the time. But he didn't get the title for various reasons, Joe Lewis. But Be uh, Braddock fought Lewis, and Joe Lewis won. And But that's Braddock's story. And Joe Lewis said uh, he was never hit so hard, that punched so hard as he was from the Braddock fight. So it's a little history. Hudson County Park is James J. Braddock Park, named after him. I had a friend of mine, actually his brother's on Facebook. My friend is, doesn't do Facebook. I grew up with my friend Fred in this area. Had a lot of experiences here. I had some in this park. And uh, Fred told me they knew Braddock lived on 70-something Street, I think, in North Bergen. They said, oh, yeah, somebody they knew growing up said Braddock, you know, he had like a head like a bull, you know, you could see that he was a fighter. Okay, and let me do a little teaching. You'll probably get more videos on this trip because I want you to see all the area. <coughs> I read Psalms 4 this morning, and there's not a lot, I'm not reading as much on this trip, but David says, when I was in distress, you enlarged me. That could be the story of Braddock. It was his trials and stuff that he became enlarged, or he grew through it. Look at this bedrock here, okay? I was telling you on the video the other day, one of the school pictures we used to take for our yearbook, I think it was right on this rock. This is bedrock. So in this part of our country, all this rock is natural, and that's why you have all the skyscrapers. You need that strong foundation to build into when you build those high skyscrapers. And David, uh, in Psalms 4, David also says, God is saying, and you sons of men, how long will you seek after sin? How long will you let that control you, draw you? I've been talking about that, and I didn't plan on it on this trip. There's some people sitting here. And then, in, in uh, 1 Timothy 6, the apostle says, Paul says, Fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life. And 1 Corinthians 9, he also says, um, No man, when he's in a race... Uh, or when a man is in a race, in an uh, athletic competition, he, uh, he only receives the prize, the reward, the crown, the medal, if he strives lawfully. And then he says, so I run and I fight, not as one that beateth the air. So you can see I'm giving you a couple of verses on fighting and boxing, which you have those things in Scripture, those examples. He says, like shadow boxing. He says, I'm not there to just punch at the air, but I'm there to obtain. But then he says, but you must discipline yourself. You must have self-discipline, lest by any means after I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Discipline, in the area of the boxing or any sport, you you discipline. You focus on that purpose. There was a great, I forget now if it was a pianist, but a great... Uh, Someone who excelled in their art, whatever it happened to be, I think. I heard it recently. They said, how did you become such a great musician? Somebody asked one day. And they said, because I chose to deny many other things. I chose to not 
do a lot of the other extracurricular activities that other people do. It could be like, but that means you didn't enjoy all the other things. And the person said, yes, that was the price I paid. I just focused on my calling in that area of the music. Now, so Paul the Apostle is saying, but we are striving for a, a eternal crown, a crown of glory that fadeth not away. That's actually James, the letter of James, so that's not Paul at that last quote. <laughs> Put them all together. God has purposes for our lives. And if you're going to fulfill that purpose, all of the other things that distract, and in these scriptures, the distraction, it says in the book of Hebrews, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that, see they're doing little... On the weekends, this place is filled with people doing little parties and all. As a kid, I didn't ever see that. That's different. But <laughs> let us lay aside every weight in the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. Oh, I might be able to walk down to the lake. I don't know. The video would be a little long for that. He said, maybe we'll end right at the lake. Let's see. When we engage in our callings, in our purpose, everybody is not going to be a preacher. I, I truly understand that. But whatever your purpose in life is, if you're distracted by sin, I don't care if it's preaching or not preaching. Sin is a distraction. Sin, unrighteousness is a distraction. And there's an aspect of discipline in your life where you have to work through that period where throughout life where God purges you. And many of the issues you hear me talk about, people just come to a place where they want to justify a lot of things that are unacceptable. In those little categories that I'm quoting... Uh, fight, run the race, have self-discipline. If you read, there's categories in those passages. But if you're doing all these other things, you're not, you're not self-discipline. You're not doing self-mastery. One of the gifts of the Spirit, you have nine gifts of the Spirit, and you have nine fruit of the Spirit in, in, recorded in Scripture. And the, and the fruit of the Spirit is love, I think this is in Galatians, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and what's the last one? Oh, see, they got the little parties, things that are temperance. Temperance is self-control. You, you have all those other things, love, joy, peace. Patience, the same things we read about in 1 Corinthians 13, the love chapter. And then you have self-control. Then you have mastery. Paul, some of the verses in here would say, Paul would say, All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. I can do anything, I'm free, but I will not be brought under the power of anything. Jesus said, Whoever sins is the servant of sin the bondage. So a lot of these little talks wound up being these this theme. So I think God is telling this theme to us. This is what, you know, part of the message on this little trip. The lake is right down there. I do want you to see the pretty the pretty area. It's very beautiful here. Now we might do the uh, cruise tonight on the the sh the cruise ship that does the harbor, New York Harbor, which you heard me talking a little bit about that, you know, history of that. And if we do that, I'll try to do a video of that as well. <laughs> Yesterday, when you saw me do that video with uh, Rick and Danny, after I shut the video off, we had really, it, the whole talk was Bible, because <laughs> Rick would bring up, he was reading some things at the library, and when he was a kid, his uh, one of his relatives was reading to him scripture, and Rick knows a little bit more than I thought. 
and Danny too, they were asking. So we talked more about an actual like Bible video after I shot the video. But it's good in that, you know, just that easy way to do it like that. Uh, just communicate, you know, as God directs you. When I was a kid, we used to come to this park in the winter, and when you had the snow, we brought our sleds, those old wooden sleds. They're probably classic things now if you can find them. There's the lake right down there. But I don't know if that's a pathway. Oh, I think it is. I usually walk to the lake from there, but I think I'll cut through. So we would come up here and ride our sleds right down. And uh, it was fun. There's a little handball court. When we were kids, there was a game handball. It's not racquetball, but you used to use a smaller ball called a handball. It's smaller than racquetball ball, and it's hard. I looked for those for years, like, oh, I just want to get one. They don't, that sport, you know, people don't play it. But you got an old handball court. And sometimes I'll throw a ball up there, or you'll see the kids practicing the handball racket against that wall, or the racquetball thing. So I was wanting to get one of those. Look how pretty this is. You get a nice... Now this, this little lake, Hudson County Park, James J. Braddock Park. We're very close to New York City. All this area where I grew up is right there, as you've all been seeing. But we would also come down in the winter. I was telling my kids the other day, and it would freeze. And you'd I, ice skate. Of course, we'd come. They'd stock this lake as kids, catch fish, catfish, whatever they had in there. My dad would take me down, me and some of my friends, and you would stick your hand on the side of the little wall there of the lake and you get crayfish. We call them crayfish. They call them crawfish, crawdaddies, or whatever that in Texas. But we would just get them with our hands. We were not eating them. They were like, oh, pets, you know, bring them home, see if we can. Oh, I think that's a pretty robin there. I'm not sure. But look how nice. People, I, I, I used to run around the lake and you know exercise thing years ago I, I met an old lady I haven't seen her here but she was here feeding those Canadian geese that normally are all over the spot and one year when I was up here I met her oh I forget her name and I talked to her and I always oh, see her for the next few years when I came back but it's been a while I haven't seen her Just getting a little tour. I won't go too long. I want you to see the park in this area. I'm going to also see the guys. Now, it's early. I got up early, but I waited until about 6 a.m. before I left. It's 6.30 now. That way, I had some light to make the video. <laughs> we were doing, look at all the trees. Pretty trees here. And I was quoting some of the Psalms. Uh... Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. These are righteousness here. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. For he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. <coughs> the ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the day of judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. These principles of all these verses, even just in this video, <coughs> are saying God's purpose and goal for us is to walk in righteousness, which in the New Testament and the Bible is defined as we're not addicted, we're not addicted to sin, we're not practicing it outside of biblical sex, biblical guidelines, <coughs> we're not, those things are not controlling us. 
each day you part each day you participate in any of those sins of the flesh for that day you defile yourself God can forgive you and the scripture says his mercies are new every morning so you wake up if you messed up and you try again but you can get to a point where you don't have to do that whole process oh I messed up please forgive me I gotta be cleansed there comes a time where that's done you continue praying and seeking but you don't find yourself praying about oh I'm unclean and I you know God cleansed me you don't you, you get beyond that you fight the good fight you learn discipline and then you get to a place where that's done the other option that people take is they get tired of fighting and then they find ways to justify because that's the flesh they get tired of saying oh I've been struggling against all of this so instead I'm going to find ways that it's actually you know interpretations of the Bible that say I can do these things reading other books you know I'm in a program or whatever I got another book and this book says I forget what the book says go by the Bible so, oh John you're getting I already cursed on the other videos these would be better so you get a nice view I'll probably wind up I think I'm going to walk back to the uh, White Castle with Burger King. My friend Danny doesn't get there until about 8 o'clock. That's my atheist friend you saw in the thing, but he, I think he's secretly a believer. And uh, <coughs> we'll have some talks, and hopefully you'll catch another video tonight. I'll make some. I'll post these throughout the day. At this point, today is Saturday. I don't know if but if I might wind up being able to just stay and not have to get another flight, you know. If I stay, it ain't going to be just a few extra days because I'm going to be buying a whole other ticket back that's on a plane on this trip. So, enjoy. All my friends that have not seen it in a while, Hudson County Park, James J. Braddock Park. You learned a little bit, if you didn't know, about Braddock and... Uh, where the park name comes from, okay? God bless you guys.